Hey everyone, my name is Benji. Welcome to my channel. Here I talk about my journey in learning PCB design, electronics, and a bunch of other things through building synthesizer modules. I've been building DIY synth modules for around 2 years now. And I've gone through a couple of iterations when it comes to how I house the modules that I make. I used to use these 2020 profile aluminum extrusions for both my rails and my frame. At first, I had this skeleton type design where I didn't use any wooden panels. But then I started working with wood and made my own case but still with the 2020 profile aluminum extrusions as my rails. I also tried building cases using this foam core or Sintra board just for quick prototypes. But for this video, I'd like to talk about my existing cases, two of which you can see here behind me. In the video I made about my Euro Panel Maker library for OpenSCAD, I talked about how I had to migrate from 2020 aluminum extrusions to standard Eurorack rails because I started designing my own Eurorack modules that just wouldn't fit in the 2020 aluminum extrusions. So all of these three cases I'm going to talk about in this video are already using standard Euro rack dimensions. First, let's start with the biggest one. This is my main rack that I use at home. It's basically my catch-all rack. It's where I test out my new builds. I built the case myself using mahogany planks that I bought online. I assembled it using wood glue and nails. I, I used this build to practice some finishing techniques. This was actually the time when I bought a palm sander and I sanded this cabinet up to 240 which is probably excessive but I like how it turned out. I finished it with mineral oil. I like using it because it doesn't have any fumes and it's very easy to handle and clean. I will probably have to retouch this after a couple of months or years but I don't mind it. It literally just stays on my desk. For the rails I've used 3D printed ones. This is based off of the demi rail design from Thingiverse. I printed it in black PETG, so so it's a bit tough. I also like it because I don't need to use slide nuts, so I screw in directly through the plastic and it self taps. I use six mm M3 bolts. This case has four 84 HP rows, and as you'd notice later, most of my cases have two power distribution systems. The first one has standard 10-pin Euro rack connector sockets, but I also have these JST sockets that I use for my point-to-point -point builds. This is much easier to wire up and I crimp my own cables, so it's so much cheaper than using ribbon cables. It also takes up less space. For both of the power distribution boards, I used PCBWay, who's also the sponsor of this video. PCBWay has been my go-to for PCB manufacturing. They're actually celebrating their 9th anniversary this month. I'll add a link in the description for some coupons that they're giving away as part of this celebration. Also check out their Flex PCB, CNC, and 3D printing services. You can even use the service to print the rails that I showed earlier. Congratulations PCB Wave! I'm excited to see what else you have in store these coming years. And of course, thank you very much for always having my back. For the power supply, I use this Minwell RT64B power supply that everyone uses. I 3D printed some covers just to make it a bit safer. If you're going to do this, I recommend you consult with an expert. 
This will require you to wire up some AC connections. Please be really careful with electricity. I don't want you to hurt yourself doing this. This second case is a bit smaller than my first one. This one is my gig case. I've started to go out more often recently to play gigs. And this is the one that I bring with me. It has only two 84 HP rows. I don't like the finish as much as the first one. I also rushed this build so things are a bit crooked. For this one, I used standard Eurorack rails. I bought two pairs just to try it out. But I think in the future, I'll stick with 3D printed ones because it's so much cheaper and it works just the same. I'm also powering this using Minwell power supplies. And just like the first case, I have two power distribution boards, the IDC ones and JST. This allows me to bring some of my prototypes to gigs and try them out there. The last case that I'd like to show you is a bit funny because I actually saw this one before I shot this video. I built a replacement one but I'm still waiting for the oil to dry upstairs. This one lives on my computer desk where I use it as a platform for developing firmware. I've been working on modules that run on DC and Arduino MCUs which require me to use my computer to program them. It's so much faster to have a mini setup on my desk for testing instead of going back and forth to my workbench where my bigger setups are. Just like the first two, this one has the standard Eurorack as well as a JST distribution board. However, I power this one using a laptop adapter and this cheap DC to DC converter that allows me to go from 15 volts to plus and minus 12 volts which my Eurorack modules need. I also use PETG rails for this one. I, I really like the demi rail design but I'm also working on a more customizable design for, for OpenSCAD. I'm working on a library where you can set the length of each rail. Now for my future plans, I'd like to get better at woodworking so I've been practicing my joinery. I'll probably redo some of these cases in the future. If you'll notice all of them are just straight boxes. I also plan on doing some cases with curves in the future, so I actually lean some of these cases on a wall whenever I do some patches. It's just more ergonomic to have them slanted upwards. It would be nice to have a case that actually addressed that. I just have to get better at woodworking. Well, that's all for now. Those are the three cases that I have at the moment. I'm pretty sure I'll have more of them in the future. I've been doing a lot more prototypes lately, so I'll probably run out of space soon. If you haven't already, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post daily updates on my builds and prototypes. I've also been doing some live streams on my Facebook. Just some ambient stuff while trying out new builds. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.